Hello and welcome to all of you. Imagine that this is World War II and you are being hired by the American military to study how we can protect airplanes from being shut down. Naturally, the military has already investigated the question and they examined dozens of planes returning from combat to see where they were hit the worst. They give you the results of their analysis. Now have a close look at this drawing showing where the bullet holes are most likely to be observed. Now the question is, where would you put the armor? If you want, you can stop the video now and just put your answer right in the comment sections below. If you responded the wings, the tail gunner or down the center of the body, in other words, the areas in red, well, you fell into a trap which is called the survivorship bias. Let's see that together. The situation I just described really happened to mathematician Abraham Wald. Wald was given a similar picture and he realized that, based on this analysis, the military was going to armor the wrong part of the planes. Why? Because in reality, the bullet holes do not indicate the areas where the planes are the most likely to be hit, but the areas where the planes returning from combat are the most likely to be hit. In other words, we are looking at areas where planes can be hit and still keep flying. The planes that were hit in undotted areas were the ones that did not make it back. So the areas that are not in red are the ones that actually need reinforcing. The survivorship bias is an error in a logical analytical process. It brings to draw conclusions based on those who have survived the process and are therefore more visible than those who did not. Let's take the example of Squid Game, a show in which a mysterious organization recruits players into a survival game, eliminating candidates round after round. The survivorship bias is the logical equivalent of analyzing only the candidates in the last round and making inferences for the whole original cohort. In more scientific terms, we would say that the observations made at the end of the investigation are a non-random selection of observations from the reference sample. But the survivorship bias can take much more subtle forms and is present in pretty much all scientific disciplines. As such, it is important to know what methodological caveats it brings. So the survivorship bias brings us to see causality when there is only a correlation and sometimes only a coincidence. Here is a classic example. Scientists looked at the survival rates and injuries of cats after falling from various heights and they noticed something rather strange. Cats that fell less than six stories arrived at a vet with more severe injuries than cats that fell from greater heights. Why? A proposed explanation was that cats reached terminal velocity after falling about five stories. And after this point, cats relax their muscles a bit like... I am now going to fire the editor, but I think you got the point. Now the data may be tainted by the survivorship bias. Cats that die in falls are less likely to be brought to a veterinarian than injured cats. Another issue is that it leads to false generalizations, for instance by overestimating historical performance or general attributes. It is especially true when you are dealing with outliers. In statistics, an outlier is a data point that differs significantly from other observations. A typical example is the lottery commercials that show us winners to keep up optimistic when the odds of winning are low, very very low. Similarly, we need to be careful with many videos and articles showing the correlation between the increasing number of college dropouts and the new wave of successful entrepreneurs, sometimes deducing that dropping out gives more chances of success. It is statistically inaccurate. In the US, for instance, the figures given by the Bureau of Labor Statistics clearly indicate that education leads to higher wages and lower unemployment. However, if you are one of these outliers who did become a billionaire, don't forget that the author of this video always strongly supported your life choices. The corollary of this is that the survivorship bias brings us to overlook crucial data. A tragic example from history is the Challenger disaster of January 1986, when a NASA Space Shuttle Orbiter disintegrated, leading to the death of its seven crew members. The Rogers Commission investigated what happened and discovered a major flaw in the analysis of the rocket engineers. There's no resilience in this particular material when it's at a temperature of 32 degrees. When observing the effects of temperature, they had excluded flights with zero incident from the analysis because they did not seem to bring any information about the effects of temperature. However, if the engineers had taken all the launches into account, they would have observed a clear negative dependence between temperature and number of incidents. 
As a conclusion, the survivorship bias is a systemic effect because it affects how we interpret data on information when making decisions. It affects the external validity of a study, meaning the capacity of the findings to be generalized to the rest of the population, but also the internal validity of a study, meaning the ability to establish causal relationships and comparisons between variables. It is noteworthy that other biases can have very similar effects. Take for instance the volunteer bias. A study on Dutch national surveys on adolescent health found that voluntary surveys tend to be answered predominantly by people who do not suffer from any kind of trauma. People with positive experiences are therefore overrepresented. Let me give you one more for the road, the coverage bias, when you inadequately represent some members of your population. A famous example can be found in history. In 1936, before the US presidential elections, the Literary Digest conducted a survey of 10 million people and received 2.4 million answers. And they obtained a very clear winner. Alfred Landon, the Republican governor of Kansas. You may be thinking, wait, I've never heard of him. That's because the actual winner was Franklin Delano Roosevelt with 62% of the votes. So what happened? Well, the Literary Digest took names from telephone directories, lists of magazine subscribers or rosters of clubs. And these were luxuries that low-income voters could not afford. Besides, in these difficult times of crisis, only wealthy people had the time to respond to a survey. Now, how can you avoid the survivorship bias? Well, you need to look both at the origin and the scope of the data collected. Start by asking yourself a simple question. How does the implementation of a study fulfill the goals of a research design? There are many tools in research to help you do just that, and they of course depend on the discipline we are talking about. But if you're interested, that could be the topic of another video. Voila, I hope that you found this short video interesting. As usual, you can hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss the next ones. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.